with the well-being of artist entrepreneurs at the core of their success. Many are unaware that there are free resources, including financial assistance for Canadian artists, that often go untapped. In today's episode, I'll be speaking with Amanda Power, the Executive Director of the Unicent Benevolent Fund, to help us figure out where to start. This is the Industry Insider video series. Hello and welcome to the Industry Insider video series presented by Music Canada and Connect Music Licensing. You are here because you understand how vital it is as artists, entrepreneurs, as businesses in the music industry, and as businesses overall that we are pivoting as the world is changing and as things like COVID-19 are changing the industries that we operate in. Now that's exactly what we're here to help you with. The Industry Insider video series is going to take some of artists' most pressing questions and we're going to bring them in front of some of the top music industry experts to not only get you quick answers to some of your timely concerns, but we want to connect you with some of the resources that can not only change your financial position, but ensure success as things are changing. I'm Dominique Grant and I'm so excited to be your host for this series, but I'm actually really excited about this week's topic. I've always been a firm believer that our well-being is interconnected with our success as artists entrepreneurs. I mean, you can't build a strong house without a strong foundation, and that's where we're going to start today. We're going to tackle some of the key resources right now that artist entrepreneurs and people in the music industry might not actually be aware of. We're going to talk about the journey of wellness and our businesses, but we're also going to talk about key supports that can help change your business. I'm super excited about our special guest this week. She's pretty incredible. At an early age, she realized that she didn't necessarily need to be on stage to impact the lives of artist entrepreneurs. And two decades later, she is the executive director of the Unison Benevolent Fund. The Unison Benevolent Fund is a not-for-profit organization providing emergency supports for artist entrepreneurs and for people in the music industry, in the Canadian music industry, that is. And the key idea behind this is that when we are in need, we all deserve to have those supports. So Unison not only provides supports in a timely manner, but they provide supports that really help impact people's lives. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Amanda Power. Hi, thank you for having me. I want to jump right in because we start off and we always like to start with a couple of quick questions. So the first question that I have for you is what is one business lesson that you have learned that has really changed your outlook on, on the work that you do and that you'd like to actually share with the, the next generation of artist entrepreneurs? To be respected in this industry and to, to really have good working relationships with people, you need to be nice and, and have honest conversations, um, and just be a good person. That's, that's what I, I try to tell, you know, the next generation and, and my, you know, the, the young staff members that we have, just be nice, be honest, be respectful. Um, and everything that your mom and dad taught you when you were a kid, carry it forward as an adult into your career. I think there's another quote that I've learned and it's, at bare minimum today, just be a good human being. <laughs> <You know>? Yes. <laughs> um, so my second question for you is what is one thing that you're grateful for? I am grateful, uh, first and foremost, always for my family. Um, and, and my family, I, I mean, my fur children, because I have, I have animals, um, but also my extended family. We're from Newfoundland. Uh, so there's a lot of us and, um, I have a wonderful family. I love them. They keep me grounded. Um, I'm thankful every day for them. And, and second to that, I'm, I'm thankful for the, the career that I have, the work that I get to do, because I believe in giving back and I believe in doing something that's bigger than just yourself. Um, so I'm grateful that I fell into a position with Unison where I'm not only combining my passion for music, but I'm able to help uh, the music community, um, in, you know, in a, in a bigger way, it's not just about me. It's not just about my team. It's about the community in Canada. And so I'm grateful for, for the family that I have and for the friends that I have and for the, the really rewarding job, um, that I have every day. And I, I, I almost just want to say like, thank you for starting the interview off on this topic, because I feel like one of the key topics you know, today is, is being of service and not just being of service to other people, but being of service to ourselves. And mm -hmm. I mean, we have all seen, a lot of us have seen the, you know, the mental health statistics prior to COVID. And, and now, 
after, especially in the Canadian music industry and in the, the lack of resources and supports that Canadian artists have continued to have. So I think my immediate question for you is, can you give us a quick synopsis of what Unison Benevolent Fund does and why artists should ensure that they understand what this resource is and that they are tapping into it? Yeah, so Unison is um, really, it's the safety net for everybody who works in the Canadian music community. Uh, we were founded back in 2011 when it was recognized there was no safety net during a time of crisis. Um, so we were built to support the music community in its entirety, uh, all genres, um, on stage, off stage, every really every role that you can have in our industry, we are there to help you. Uh, you are part of our community. Um, so we are there during times of crisis and with two very distinct programs. We have a financial assistance program and we have a counseling and health solutions program. Um, and both programs are completely free. Um, they are confidential um, and they're open to anybody who works in music in Canada. And, and so you actually touched on, on two really important things. One, that you guys or you are becoming you know the safety net for for artist entrepreneurs and i think i want to share a quick story about a friend of mine who's actually signed to a label you know she was had a huge tour ready to go and all of her live touring revenue is no longer there so she mm -hmm. actually is in a position where not only is she a very well-known and established artist but her finances are significantly hit and there's a, sh a level of, of shame that certain people carry when it comes to asking for help unfortunately because oftentimes they they just we don't always have the resources for them. So I think one of the questions that I would love to ask for you is for an artist right now who's in need that is actually worried about applying for the Unison Benevolent Fund or the Unison Fund and is is nervous about, you know, their image being perceived a certain way, how do you maintain confidentiality? Yeah, and I think I should just back that up for a minute because um, we actually have two different uh, financial assistance programs right now. Um, so I think, and first I just want to kind of break those down. Um, the first program is our, uh, the standard program that we have, we've had since we launched, um, the financial assistance portion of our organization back in 2015. So what that is, is that's the one that we will help you with rent and groceries and medical. And, and when you're really in a dire situation, um, with the, coronavirus and and everything in our industry basically stopping as of you know mid march uh we launched very quickly the covid-19 relief program and the covid-19 relief program through unison is um it, it's a much simpler process um so we're going we ask people you know basically give us your your bio your resume your social handles tell us what you do in the music industry and rather than um paying, you know, rent to the landlord or, or sending grocery gift cards, which is what we, we did with the other program. The COVID program is here's a check for a thousand dollars made out directly to you as the applicant. Um, and then you can put that thousand dollars towards, you know, whatever you see fit. If you need help with your rent or groceries or medical, it's up to you to manage how you want to spend that money. Um, so I just wanted to sort of break that down first so people can understand that we have two programs when they look at our website. Um, when people are, if you're sitting on the fence about applying, I, I, I would say get off of it <laughs> because we're there to help you. And we, uh, we've been very, very fortunate since COVID, um, with a lot of corporate donations and people really stepping up to, to want to help the music community. So we're in a position right now where we can help you. We can cut you that thousand dollar check. Um, and it's a very simple process to apply. Uh, once you do reach out, um, we're not looking into, you know, your tax records and, and, you know, if you haven't filed your taxes, well, that, we're not going to look into that for you. Uh, we just need to know that you work in music, you need help, basic information, and here's your thousand dollar check because that's what's needed right now to get people through, right? Keep a roof over your head, put food on your table, pay for your medical. And then once you've gone through that first round, um, you know, then 30 days later, if you, if you still, you know, say your serve is run out or you you don't have EI, you can come back to Unison and, and apply for another $1,000 and we will cut you another check for $1,000. So 
our goal is to always keep everybody moving forward and, and not let anybody uh, fall to the wayside and, and really, uh, you know, keep everybody safe and healthy. Awesome. That's, I think that's incredible. And I, I think what's really stood out to me about, about Unison is the timeliness of how quickly and how discreet mm -hmm. you provide not only financial supports, but access to mental health supports. And I think that everyone watching this can probably relate to needing some type of mental health support or knowing someone who has needed one and it either taking an extensive amount of time to actually be able to get to you know a therapist or someone that can support them or them just not even knowing where to start so i just want to yeah. quickly say that that is great and on that topic a question i'd love to ask is what is the biggest misconception surrounding applying for assistance that that people should know about right now um, I, I think the misconception is that it, it's difficult and labor intensive. <laughs> um, you know, our financial assistance program right now with our COVID-19 relief program, it's very simple and it's very straightforward. Uh, we're looking for your basic information, um, bio, resume, your social handles. We want to verify that you do work in music. Uh, we know everybody in music right now needs help. So it doesn't go much beyond that. I just want to touch on the counseling services for a moment. You know, when you call counseling, they're going to get you the assistance you need right away. You know, if, if it's a triage, if it's a situation where you're being triaged as a 911 urgent care mental health situation, you get help at that moment. Um, if you're calling for something that can wait a couple of days, they're going to book you an appointment with the right counselor to talk about that challenge at that, you know, in a couple of days time. But we, we really work at Unison to help everybody as quickly as possible because it's difficult to put your hand up and say, I need help. Um, when people come to us, they're, they're coming to unison because they find themselves in a situation where they need immediate assistance. It's not assistance in a month's time or two months time. They need assistance right then and there and within the next week. So we're, we're really proud at how, of how quickly we can turn things around, um, within the office and how quickly Morno Chappelle, our counseling provider, uh, responds to situations as well. I want to just jump really quickly into the myth busting section of this interview because there are so many myths about applying for financial assistance, about, about all of it. So I think the first question that I want to ask in this category is, does receiving financial assistance impact things like CERB or like government benefits? And can you speak a bit to that for anyone who might be concerned about that? Yeah, it, um, it does not. Um, the money that Unison gives you is a financial gift. Uh, so it is not taxable income. Uh, it does not need to be reported. It does not affect your CERB or your EI um, benefits. So really, when you ask Unison for financial assistance, we're giving you a gift um, and it does not become taxable income. Did you find that prior to COVID happening, that there was still a very significant um, amount of mental health needs, a, a amount of requests, and what's the major difference that you're seeing in between calls and people kind of accessing Unison's resources pre-COVID versus currently? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely been an increase um, in the in the counseling service calls that we, um, Morno Chappelle has received since COVID. Um, I think what we were seeing prior to COVID was that people were starting in our in our music community are starting to recognize that it's it's okay to take time for yourself. It's okay to be mentally healthy um, yourself so that you, you know, you can be there for others. So we were seeing a trend that people were, uh, you know, there was definitely an increase of calls year after year after year, people saying, I need help um, and getting that help for them. When the pandemic hit, it definitely, there was a huge, there was a big spike. Um, but the, the, the scary part of that spike was that there were more uh, urgent mental health crisis calls than we have seen in years prior. Um, and by that, I mean, it's a 911 situation where the person needs to speak with a counselor immediately. Um, that's scary because I think with the pandemic and, and everything, you know, being at home, not being on the road, um, it's just, there's a, there's a lot happening right now in the world. And I think, uh, being at home and having the time to process all of that um, versus being out on the road and, and, you know, going gig to gig or, or in the recording studio and doing, you know, your next album, people have more time to think. And, and with more time to think, they are recognizing situations and they're saying, I need help. And they're calling and getting it, which is, which is fantastic, right? That's why we were built. Um, so there's definitely been an increase 
in the crisis counseling services. Um, but I would say the trend year after year, you know, since I started back in 2015 is people are recognizing it's okay to ask for help and reaching out and getting that help. And, and again, I want to, I want to commend you because it is difficult for a lot of people to ask for help, especially yeah. artists, you know, um, and I mean, just anyone in general. Um, and I know that like a part of the interview was talking about, you know, access and, and BIPOC, you know, groups that also have been impacted significantly throughout their lives, you know, surrounding access and surrounding challenges with also finding the, the, the particular supports that can accommodate systemic barriers that are actually tied to their needs. So I, I just think that the work that you guys are doing is, is really incredible. And I think that it's really awesome that you have addressed what you are addressing, you know, in, in, in the current time, but that you're also making these resources, you know, available and in a timely mm -hmm. manner. So I want to jump into a really uh, important question. Because uh, since I can remember, and for a lot of artist entrepreneurs, access is a huge topic that mm -hmm. is even more relevant today. Um, access for groups like the LGBTQ community, uh, Black Lives, um, Indigenous groups. There are a lot of different groups who systemically haven't been able to have the same access as other people for a lot of different reasons. And I know that Unison recently put out a statement and is really interested in, in beginning a process of, of looking at this. So I was just wondering if you could actually just speak to uh, just the statement that you guys put out and, and just the general process of, of, of looking at what you guys are, are looking to do in next steps. Yeah, um, I, mean, I think when everything happened, um, we all sort of stepped back and said, we can do better. We will do better. We should be doing better. And, and how, how fast can we, can we start making things better? Um, you know, cause we, we didn't want to be dragging our heels, uh, on it. We, we recognized right away that things had to be better, you know, for us internally, um, uh, at Unison. And I'm, I'm talking about, you know, our, our, not just our staff, but our board of directors, um, but also with the partnerships that we have and, and specifically with Morneau Chappelle, uh, the counseling provider. Um, you know, so it, we were right away, we, we started conversations with them, with Morneau Chappelle about, okay, what are you guys going to do to, to make this better and, and, and provide more resources, uh, to individuals from, you know, the BIPOC communities. And, and it just, it had, it had to be, it had to be more, they had to step up and do more. And they immediately were, were like, you're right, we do. And we're going to, um, so there was never any hesitation on anybody's level, um, a, a, about taking the next steps to make everything better. And, and they, they at Morneau Chappelle have committed that, you know, by the fall, they are going to have better programming in place. They're going to have, uh, counselors who are, you know, from the different communities who are, are available to speak to somebody from, you know, the black community or the indigenous community. Um, you know, cause there are challenges that everybody faces, uh, that someone, you know, a white counselor can't necessarily understand. Um, just like some counselors don't really understand the music community. So that's something else we ask them is, can you find people who have more of a music industry background that can be of help to the people who are specific in our community? Because it, it's, you know, when you're touring on, on the road for weeks on end, to try and put that into perspective for somebody who, you know, has never had a, done anything in the musical industry period, it's a very hard thing to relate to. So we're asking, we're asking a lot of Morneau Chappelle and they're coming back to us and saying, yes, most definitely we want to do this and we're going to, and they've started putting processes in place to make things better. Um, so we're very pleased at Unison that they have responded and reacted so quickly. You know, the earth is always spinning. So if you're not changing, you're actually moving backwards. And so um, I think that that's really great. And especially because mental health support has consistently been a, an issue. You know, I know lots of indigenous Indigenous artists, I know black trans artists, I know just a lot of different intersectionalities and the number one thing that prevents them from being able to access resources is actually because of access. So I think it's going to mean a lot that Unison is, is evaluating this and I mean you guys have already been doing really incredible work. So um, so yeah, I just really wanted to ask that and, and, and for any artists that are again wondering what the process is to and whether they should apply because they need the assistance, just go to the website and I think that's what you know Amanda is saying is that the website is very comprehensive and there is a COVID you know, relief system in place right now to ensure that you know all of you can get the supports that you need. What is the connection between well-being and being a successful artist entrepreneur and what does that mean to you and why do you think it's so important that 
entrepreneurs are aware of 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 this? Um, I, I think it's very important for everyone to to understand their own mental health wellness. Um, you know, it's not just about how you're physically feeling anymore. It is truly about mental understanding um, and, and being understanding of other people's mental health awareness as well. So I think as an individual, everybody should really stop to take the time to, to focus on themselves. And it's not a selfish thing to do that. I, I know, I think there's the misconception that well, if I stop and focus on me and I take care of me, I'm being selfish. I, sh I shouldn't be doing that. No, no. You got to take care of you to help take care of everybody else um, and to support everybody else and to hold everybody else up. So I would say that definitely take the time for you and make sure you're doing well. Um, and then that, then you are a better help and assistance to everybody else in your in your circle and in your community. What impact do you hope to have you know, in the music industry? What impact do you hope to have in the lives of artists, entrepreneurs, you know, with the work that, that Unison is doing and, and the work that you're doing? I get emotional because I, I always hate to think of anybody falling through the cracks. We should be doing better as people. <laughs> um, we should be helping more. We should be, you know, if, if you have the financial resources to help do that, you know, if, if you know somebody's struggling, call them, pick up the phone. Um, so I just, I think for, for me, Unison is so important because we need, we need to have each other's backs. And in a community, I mean, we're a big country, but we are a small music community when you think about it. Um, so if we don't look out for each other and we don't support each other and we don't take care of each other, where does that leave us as people? <laughs> um, so I, I, I love the work that we do at Unison and I, I'm passionate about it. And, and, and I want, I just want there to be healthy, safe places that we as a community can thrive in, um, you know, cause Canadian music is great. I mean, we've got some really kick-ass music. Um, so we should be sharing that with the world as much as we can. And, and we should be developing artists as best we can. And we should have the safe spaces where they can go to create this music and share their music. What can you do to help? How can you help uh, support each other, be there for each other, uh, hold each other up? Um, yeah, and I, I think that's why Unison is so important to me. There is a there's a quote that I heard, and it's you know you can't be a humanist or a feminist if you don't start with yourself. And there's a reason why you know on mm -hmm. airplanes they tell you to put your mask on first. And it is that well being can't start with everyone else. It needs to start with you getting yourself to a great point, and then it needs to be figuring out how you can be of service to others. And I think yeah. that that's why you know with Music Canada and with Connect Music Licensing that we are so excited to have you be part of this is because you are offering artists the opportunity to, in a crisis and in moments of crisis, to have that support. And the point that you brought up about the music industry being being small and us needing to support each other, I think that Unison is definitely a testament to that. So I would love to ask you, can you just share the contact information or someone right now is like, great, I realize that I need to tap into Unison Benevolent Fund's resources. Where can I go to tap into mm -hmm. them and, and what do they do to get the process started? Yeah, so um, the counseling line is 1-855-9-UNISON is the phone number. And you call that number and, you know, push one for counseling and one, two for financial assistance, et cetera. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, you get on the phone with Morneau Chappelle, they triage you. Um, for financial assistance, you know, visit our website, unisonfund.ca. Uh, you can email assistance at unisonfund.ca uh, for the financial assistance application, uh, the COVID-19 relief program. Um, and follow us on our socials uh, because we are putting out a lot of really great content about, you know, staying uh, mentally healthy in during this pandemic, um, helping with financial resources and, and uh, how to... Um, you know, financial literacy and all that kind of stuff. And, and just we're, there's a lot of great content that is going out through our Sunday self-care blog, uh, so, sorry, hashtag self-care Sunday. Um, and then, yeah, I would say follow our socials at Unison Fund, 
visit our website, you know, call the one 9 unison phone number if you need counseling um, and just follow along. And if you need help, don't be afraid to ask for it because we're there to help you and it's confidential. We're not going to share your story with anybody. Thank you so much. Um, once again, I am here with Amanda Power, the Executive Director of the Unison Benevolent Fund. Um, Unison is an, a resource for artists, for Canadian artists, entrepreneurs, anyone in the music industry who is in a time of crisis, who needs support, or simply just needs, you know, a little bit of assistance. Um, Amanda's provided all of the information, but we are also going to leave a link to Unison's website. Um, please ask for help when you need it. And another key takeaway that I think we've learned, especially from Amanda today, is that in addition to being kind and being of service to other people, be kind and be of service to yourself. And the way that yes. you do that is in talking about well-being and talking about our journey as artist entrepreneurs, it's in ensuring that the foundation of our house, meaning us, is strong so that we can build the rest of it. Thank you again, Amanda. Thank you so much to the Unison team um, and everyone behind what you guys are doing. And we're really looking forward to um, continuing to support the work that you're doing and to uh, continuing to support the Canadian music industry in, in, in as many ways as we can. Well, thank you for having me and, <laughs> and, and sharing the story about Unison and putting the highlight on, on the great work that my, you know, my team were, were trying to do and help as many people as we can um, and trying to help as quickly as possible. So uh, thank you. Thank you.